So in today's project, we are going to make a complete house monitoring system that allows you to monitor your house from anywhere in this world because we are going to use the Google Firebase to store the information and you could get it from your app that we're going to see how to create using the MIT App Inventor. So every house needs this device because we are going to use the gas leaking sensor which could save your life if you have gas leaking in your house and you are not at home. When I use the lighter or the gas that comes out of it, you see that we have this warning and there is an alarm sound. If you leave it working in background, it's gonna warn you about this. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. First of all, I want to talk about the components that we're gonna need. So you will need an ESP32 microcontroller or an ESP8266 that has the Wi-Fi capability. Also, you will need few sensors that you want. For me, I'm gonna use the DHT sensor that allows you to get the temperature and the humidity. Also, I'm gonna use the gas sensor that is called MQ5. We're going to connect these to the pins of the ESP32. Then we're going to read this information and send it to Google Firebase so that we can get it from the app anywhere. Let's start by connecting the DHT sensor. So it has three pins. The right pin is the VCC. I'm gonna use the 3.3 volts. Next, we have the data that I'm gonna to connect to the pin number 26. And finally, we have the ground that goes to the GND, like this pin. And there you go, it is powered up. The same thing with the gas sensor. It's really simple to hook up. We have the VCC and the GND that goes to the VCC and the GND. And we have the pin that we can use to read and check whether we have gas leaking or not. The right pin is the VCC. I'm gonna use the five volt pin. Next, we have the GND that goes to the GND. So I will use the same column. And finally, we have the signal pin that I'm gonna hook up to the pin number 27. Now we can move on to the coding part. But first of all, we need to create a Firebase project. You could go to firebase.google.com by going to the console. Then we can create a project. Let's give this project a name, like house monitoring and hit continue. You could enable the Google Analytics, but we don't need it. Let's create the project. Now we need to use the database feature of Google Firebase by going to build and real-time database. To enable this feature, we can press this button, create database. Here we can set the location of the data. I'm gonna leave it as default, United States. Then we can hit next. We have the locked mode. By default, the read and the write is set to false, which means you can't read or write to the database. To make it easier, I'm gonna use the test mode, but this will work for only 30 days. So let me show you how to use the locked mode. Basically, we have to go to rules and change this to true, but that's not recommended. Then hit publish. Next, I want to secure the Google Firebase by adding some kind of authentication. You have to go to build and authentication the same thing, we have to enable this feature. Here we have different options like Facebook or you could use a phone number. For me, I'm gonna use an email and password. Then you have to enable it and save it. At this point, we haven't added a user. So we need to go to this section and add new one. And the user is gonna be our ESP32 microcontroller. Here I'm gonna use an email and a password and add the user. The next step is to upload the code to the ESP32 microcontroller. Let's open up our sketch with the Arduino IDE. On top, we have some libraries that needs to be installed. The Wi-Fi library is built in, but you have to install two more libraries, the Firebase ESP client and the DHT library to deal with the DHT sensor by going to the library manager and writing the names Firebase ESP client. It is the first one. We've already installed it in our previous projects. Next, we have the DHT sensor library. Make sure to install the first one by Adafruit. And once you do that, you will need to change some parameters. As I said, the ESP32 needs to be connected to a network so that we can access the Google Firebase. For me, I'm gonna put the SID, which is the router name or the network name, and the password. Next, we have few parameters that are related to the Google Firebase project, like the API key and the URL. Let's go back to the Google Firebase. Here's the URL under the real-time database. We can copy it from here and paste it. The API key is located under the parameters of the project. And here it is. Make sure to copy your own and paste it under the IDE. 
for me I'm gonna use the email that I have added and the user password and that's pretty much it now the rest of the project is creating the DHT object we've used the pin number 26 and the DHT version is DHT 11 because we have another one that is called DHT 22 make sure to select the right one the gas pin is connected to the pin number 27 under the setup function we are setting the pin modes and initializing the DHT sensor then we are connecting the ESP32 to the internet after that we are setting the parameters of the Google Firebase like the API key, the email, the password and the URL and under the loop function which is called over and over again we are checking if the Google Firebase is ready by using this command firebase.ready in such case we are sending the DHT sensor value as well as the gas leaking uh, parameter for that we are using firebase.rtdb which stands for real time database dot set boolean because we are going to store this as a boolean which means true or false but for the humidity and the temperature we are using the dht object dot read the humidity and read temperature if you want to learn more about these sensors make sure to watch my last episodes we've talked about them in details but here we are focusing on the google firebase we are using firebase.rtdb dot set float because it's a number the same thing it takes in the fbdo object and the path i have used slash house slash temp and the value that we want to send to the google firebase which is the temperature value i'm using this in celsius but if you want to get it in fahrenheit you have to pass in true as a parameter and that's pretty much it so you see the code is really simple now we are going to upload it to the esp32 microcontroller after selecting the kind of board that you are using for me i'm using esp32 w row and the port of the USB cable then we can hit upload for some ESP32 microcontrollers you have to hold down the boot key in order to upload the sketch and before we create the app we are going to check if the database is changing let's open up our Firebase project and go back to the real-time database and as you can see we have this house we have few parameters like the gas leak it is set to false for now also we have the humidity and the temperature Let's check if the gas sensor is working by using the lighter. As you can see the parameter, change it to true. That means that our sensor is working and the ESP is sending the data. You could access these values from anywhere in this world, but you will have to open up the project from your Google Firebase account. Now we want to link an app and you will get notified with a warning if you have gas leaking in your house. And to do that, we are going to use the MIT App Inventor. Let's create an app. If you want to learn more about it, make sure to check out my video. I have explained everything in detail, but you could follow along because it's really simple. Let's go to projects and create a new project. I'm going to call it house monitoring and hit OK. Then you will have this empty interface. First, I want to add some text so that we can see the temperature and the humidity. And to do that, we use a label. You have to drag it like this. From the right hand side, we have the properties of this label. For example the font size let's increase it to 40 and change the color of the text to red one i'm going to use this as a title like temperature by selecting the screen and from the properties section i'm going to change the align horizontal to center i think this is going to be much better by using another label we are going to put the value of the temperature for now i'm going to use another text for testing let's increase the font size to 30 Last but not least, I want to use some kind of a notification to the app so that we can display a warning whenever we have gas leaking. To do that, we have another element that is called a notifier. You simply have to drag it and it's not visible. Finally, we need to add other functionalities to the app so that we can communicate with the Google Firebase project. And the component that is responsible for that is under experimental. It is called Firebase DB. Let's drag it and hit OK. The same thing it's not visible if you select this component you will have some properties like the firebase url we have to change it from our project let's copy it again and put it under the mit app we have to provide it with some kind of token or a secret key under the project settings then service accounts it's located under the database secrets we can show it and copy it then we have to paste it under the firebase token now our app will be able to access the Google Firebase. Before that, we need to change the project bucket. 
this is the first name of the path that we are using in my case I'm using the word house so you could add another option like the office or something else make sure to use the same project bucket name our last step is to load the data like the temperature and the humidity and change the text from the app we are going to use the clock because we want to change these values each second or each two seconds and this clock component is located under sensors and let's drag it to the app I think I'm going to change these values each two seconds by setting the time interval to 2000 milliseconds which means two seconds we can move on to the blocks section which is like the coding part and the logic of the app first we are going to use the clock by dragging this block when a clock one timer and everything you put under this block is going to be called each two seconds basically we have to load the value from the google firebase by selecting firebase db and the block that we're going to need firebase db get value to get the values that we want here it takes in two parameters the first one is the tag like uh, gas leak humidity or temperature to set the tag we can drag in a text and write the name like temp and the second parameter is the value if the tag is not found now we want to use this block two more times to get the humidity and the gas leak parameter we can right click and duplicate then we can change the tag name to humidity the last one is the gas leak but at this point we haven't got the value we're actually telling the google firebase to read the value or get it we have another block under the firebase db and it's this one when the firebase db got a value or got some values we are going to check if the tag is actually the temperature tag in that case we are going to change the text which is called label 2 to the value of the temperature that we're going to read so we need to add some kind of control or an if statement let's drag it so if the tag that we are going to get by pressing this option equals the temperature tag for that we have to add some kind of a logic or a comparison so if the value that we get equals the temperature tag let's duplicate it to save a little bit of time in such case we are going to access the label number two and change its text using one of the blocks and here it is set the label text to the value of the temperature if you hover the mouse over the value we have this option get value we have to concatenate the letter C for that we can go to text and we have this join block we are going to join the value with another text I'm going to use space then C for Celsius and we want to put it inside the label number 2 the same thing for the humidity because I'm a bit lazy let's duplicate it again and check if the tag is actually the humidity tag in such case we are going to change the label number 4 to the value of the humidity but the unit here is the percent and the last parameter is the gas leak parameter if it's true we are going to send a notification or a warning we are going to check if the value of the tag equals gas leak in such case we are going to add another comparison using another if statement and here we are going to compare the value of the gas leak parameter by using the value get value if it's true by going to logic in that case we are going to use the notifier we have different commands I'm going to use the show alert notice and display some kind of text like warning here I'm going to write warning gas leaking and you could play some kind of alarm sound if you want by adding the sound component to test the app you could build it and get the apk file but for me I'm going to use the emulator basically you have to install this program that is called ii starter then you could go to uh, connect and emulator so this is going to take a few minutes let's wait a few seconds the temperature is 32 celsius and the humidity is about 50 percent let's check if the gas sensor is working and there you go we have this little warning gas leaking so i think that's pretty much it guys for this video i hope you like it if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to hit the subscribe button that helps me a lot to create these kind of videos and i will see you in the next one